hope you're having a great day and I hope you had a great weekend. Today is World Mental Day. Mental health, emotional health. We're going to talk about that because it's become a buzzword. Poor mental health, poor emotional health. And yes, poor emotional health is the root cause of most diseases that reach out there, that are out there. They either cause diseases or they prevent us from getting better if we have a disease. Now, today's talk is more about reflection and perception. Too many things in the world today are glorified. It's real. There are mental health problems. There are emotional health problems. There are physical health problems. But the world has gotten comfortable at glorifying everything. The point is, we want to understand how we see this and what actions we can take. Go back 10, 15, 20 years ago. It was unheard of. Today, fast forward. We are more than 10 years, 15 years ago. Our ancestors, our grandfathers, our grandmothers had. We have more entertainment more communication, more access to comfort, quick food, fast food, fast everything. Yet, emotional wellness and mental wellness is at its lowest. Now, we've got to break it down. Sometimes poor emotional health and mental health is caused by many. There could be childhood abuse, childhood trauma, there could be death, there could be grief, there could be isolation and loneliness. All of these are real problems. Take help, seek help, figure out the right action plan that you need to get better. Some cases need medication. There are chemical imbalances, the serotonin, dopamine, chemical imbalances. You need psychiatric treatment and medication. I'm not talking about all of that today. I'm talking about a bigger problem. The self-made poor emotional health. The self-made poor mental health. We've got to address too. Because a lot of it is self-made by us. By slapping on labels. So carelessly we talk today when something bad happens. Oh, I'm depressed. No, you're not depressed. You're not always depressed. Just because something depressing happened in your day today doesn't mean you become depressed. Yesterday you were fine. Tomorrow you may be okay. Certain symptoms of depression continue every day. And of course, take treatment to find out if you're depressed or not. Someone went through a breakup today. You're depressed. Yesterday you weren't. You know the root cause. Take help, take right action, move on. But the way we use it when life doesn't go well for us, we start labeling ourselves. The moment I label myself with anything, I start to behave that way. I literally put myself in a box with a label and I start to behave that way. The part that I'm talking about today is what we do and how we behave. I'm also going to give you a solution that will work for most people. If you have the courage to try it. Number one. If you are spending more than 10 minutes on social media every day, get off social media for a week. Trust me on this. Let's say you're not even depressed or you don't have mental or emotional issues. Still, I want you to get off social media for a week. Can't do it for a week? Get off social media for three days. And I can promise you the way that you're going to feel after that will give you a lot to think of on how social media is contributing in unconscious, subconscious, and even conscious ways to the way you think, feel, the new mindsets and belief systems that you have in your head. I know a lot of my patients, I prescribed no news for a week and 100% of them felt better. Not a little bit better, a lot better, a lot better. You see, when we're trying to heal from anything, we got to create the right environment. While we create the right environment inside of us, changing the foods that we eat, exercise, water, sleep, micronutrients, all of that stuff, what about the environment around us? What we're seeing every day is going into your subconscious mind, what you hear, what you read, all of that. The words that you speak become seeds that you plant into your subconscious mind. So you keep on saying, oh, life is hard, life is difficult, I'm depressed, I'm a victim, I'm this, I'm that, I'm always sad. How do you think you're going to feel when you plant more of those seeds in your subconscious mind? You reap what you sow, literally, in real life and also in your subconscious mind. You keep thinking more negative thoughts, you feel negative. You keep thinking more happy thoughts, you're happy. Number one, get off social media or minimize it. It is destroying us. There is no one out there enlightened to say that, oh, I'm going into social media mindfully. That's why a lot of mindful people are not on social media and they don't spend time on social media because it's impossible. It's impossible to scroll through everything 
and not become what you see or feel inadequate with what you read or see. This is one of the biggest issues. You have a platform of unconscious or subconscious comparison with other people's lives, bodies, bank balances, cars, handbags, watches, and everything else. No matter what you say, a lot of people aren't happy in life. I'm just on social media for entertainment. Even the entertainment that you watch in movies, documentaries, series, the music you listen to is forming patterns in your subconscious mind. Get off for a week, get off for three days, try it out. That's point number one. Point number two, entitlement. Entitlement is also a huge reason. We feel we're entitled. The world has fed us enough of lies and comfort. We feel we're entitled to never fail. We feel that when we get into a relationship, it should never break. We feel people should say the things that we want to hear. We, we think people should do the things we want them to do. That comes from a space of entitlement, which involves ego and pride. Whoever said it has to be that way? You've got to break down that perception. You've got to break down that mindset and belief. We are not entitled to anything. We are entitled to what we sow. We are entitled to the hard work we put in, the sacrifices, and yet we can still get hurt. Yet we can still lose. Yet we can still go through failure. No one ever said anything is guaranteed. Nothing lasts forever and nothing is guaranteed. But we live with hope. We live with hope because we remember there are good days and bad days. We live with hope knowing that, try, we can fail, but we also have the resilience to bounce back. But when we get into relationships with entitlement, jobs with entitlement and all of that stuff that, oh, my father should behave that way. My mother should behave that way. My sister should be this. My partner should be it. Says who? Your ego. They're human beings like you and me. Everyone as a human being is entitled to fail, to make mistakes, to exhibit the seven deadly sins, all of that. We're human. Because there's a lot of pretense around in the world where people are trying to pretend to be good all the time and pretend to be someone else. That's what's confusing you and making you feel more inadequate. You, me, and everyone, we are imperfect. We are products of nature. Look at nature. Is nature perfect? Absolutely not. The same sun shines down on all vegetation, plants, animals, and yet it's all different. You have some plants that, are, that die way before and some that live longer. Likewise with animals and likewise with human beings. So we are imperfect. Accept that gracefully. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Imagine everyone perfect. What a boring world. We are all imperfect. Where we can get better, we get better. Where we can improve, we improve because we strive for excellence. We don't strive to be perfect. That's why perfectionists are always angry, irritable, unhappy because they're trying to be in control of things and people that they can never be. It's not, it's not bad. Channel that energy that you put into trying to be perfect into excellence. Excellence means you do your best, you're 500%. Fails, okay, you continue doing your best. You don't give up, you don't start blaming the system, whining. You don't jump from one relationship to another just because your partner couldn't fulfill one part. You don't want to put in work, you want to put in sacrifice to evolve, to understand that relationships are never meant to be perfect. We got to make them perfect together. Your job is never meant to be perfect for you. You've got to adapt somewhere. You've got to accept certain things, let go of certain things, which brings me to my third point, acceptance and letting go. Two powerful words, easy to say, very difficult to do. Why? Because the ego and pride comes in between that. We find it difficult to accept and difficult to let go because the ego wants to be right all the time. Why? Why? It's not fair. Why should it be this way? Why should it be that way? Why should he say that? You relax the ego and pride, which is your false sense of being. You realize that acceptance and letting go is peace. The part of least resistance is peace. I'm not saying you become a doormat. I'm not saying that at all. There's a big difference between being a doormat and a victim to being assertive and adopting the part of least resistance. When you stop resisting, you have peace. You have joy, which is already there. We all have it in us. You can't create peace. You can't buy peace. I, I love reading war stories, right? From World War I to World War II and all of that stuff, because there is so much of learning from some of the toughest people in the world. I'm not just talking about soldiers. I'm talking about their children that they left behind, their wives, their families, and all of that stuff, that toughness, not being able to talk to them. There are so many life lessons to learn from them. So many. 
What do they exhibit? Resilience. They don't have that entitlement. They're so grateful. And what do we have in the world today? So much and the most ingratitude, starting with our own body. We don't understand that gift of life, yet we abuse it. Sometimes, okay, all the time. Don't go home and write your gratitude journal every night when you're disrespecting your own gift of life. Your gratitude journal is useless. Gratitude journal, just writing three top things that you're grateful for, three people that you're grateful for, useless, unless you start exhibiting it the way you treat yourself. That is the first step of gratitude. The first step of gratitude. A lot of people like to help the whole world and do all of that stuff, but they're so ungrateful with their own body. They don't treat it the right way. They're okay to burn out. They're okay to please other people, but not take care of themselves. You think it's a noble thing. It's got a little bit of nobility but you still have ingratitude towards the gift of life. If you've been given a gift of life, use its power. You, for that, you need to be healthy, to serve other people, to serve whoever you want. There's no point you losing your health because you ain't looking after it, becoming a liability to your families, to your loved ones, to society. There are genuinely sick people to look after them. And there are people who make themselves sick through the choices that they make, mentally, physically, emotionally. So we, we got to, we, we you know, reflect on these little things. How are we living? Conscious living, living with mindfulness. I'm not saying have a boring life. Of course, have a little bit of junk. Be adventurous to align. Come back, come back to the source. Realign, realign. Don't go off track so far away from your spirit that you're uninspired and you're unhappy and you have so much, but yet you can't feel happy. You can't feel joyful. So a lot of our mental health and emotional health, besides the points that I spoke about earlier, is because of this. We don't want to suck it up, look inside and realize I'm the cause of this problem. We want to blame and project. Everyone has a perfect truth and a perfect lie. We know right now what our perfect truth and perfect lie is. We know right now why our relationship may not be working out and what you're doing wrong. Maybe your partner's doing something wrong, but what are you doing wrong? You know it. You know it. That's your perfect truth. And the perfect lie is the lie that you tell yourself every day that you're perfect and it's always someone else's fault. You already know why you haven't got that promotion. You can blame everyone, call the company biased. Maybe they are, I don't know. But you already know also what you lack for that role maybe. And sometimes life is just unfair. Suck it up and move on. It's unfair not just to you, it's unfair to everyone. The point is suck it up and move on. Do not create mental illness and emotional illness. Do not create it. Like I said, there are genuine cases. I'm not here to take away from the people who are genuinely, genuinely in need of that help. For everyone else, it's become a fad. Just carelessly use that, well, I'm emotionally sick today, and so what, what, what's your problem? You know, I, I, I have an unfair work environment. Go and sort it out. Communicate. Not happy? Change your job. Difficult. But you have a choice. You're choosing to become a victim to the system. And sometimes you don't have a choice. Adapt. Everyone doesn't have the perfect job or the perfect relationship, but if you're still choosing to stay there, learn to adapt. Every human being has the ability to adapt. Right now, in me and in you, there are trillions of cells adapting every second of the day and night to the environment, to the air, to light, to the food that we're eating. It's adapting for survival. If at a cellular level we can adapt, you can adapt at an emotional, mental, and physical level as well. And that's the truth. Now we can get stronger with this. If we're weak, take help. There's nothing wrong with weakness. We should uplift one another. Ask for help if you want, but sit down and ask yourself that honest question. What is my perfect truth and my perfect lie? When you address that head on, take help if you need. You're not gonna have these problems that are self-created. Choose to be different from the herd. Choose not to put yourself into a box. Gen Z's, millennials, baby boomers, all of that. Don't let society put you into a box. You're a human being capable of change, capable of adapting. You don't need to be put into a box and labeled and then start to behave that way because otherwise you'll feel odd. All Gen Z should behave this way. All baby boomers should, should, should behave this way. You choose to behave the way that makes you joyful that is righteous to you, that gives you joy. Get yourself out of the boxes that society has put you in. That is your misery, that is your suffering, and that is what is pulling you down every single day. You are a unique individual. You are a unique human being. Right now, if you've given your power away, you can get it back. 
You know it. You know it. It just takes courage and strength. Where do we get this courage and strength from? It's already there. But there's a wall of fear. Between courage and strength and us, there's a wall of fear. You've got to go back and reclaim your power to feel abundant, to feel amazing, and to feel enough. Otherwise, most people are going to die a life of never feeling enough. Right now, you are enough the way you are. Maybe you need more money, you need more whatever. All of us need a little bit more. But you're enough in your mind. If you feel that you are not enough right now, you are already in a space of misery, inadequacy, lack. You're going to attract just that. We know that. Because that's how you're thinking. That's the space you're operating from. That's the space you're vibrating from. So we need to understand. This is what I wanted to speak to you, to you today on mental health and emotional health. What else helps us with that health? Get sleep. How many of you have a great night of sleep and you wake up feeling like a billion bucks? You wake up so happy. Your skin's glowing. Energy. You're ready to take on the day. That's the power of sleep. You sleep deprived mental illness. You sleep deprived, deprived emotional illness. Change your diet a little bit. You know, ultra processed food is only exciting your brain. It's not giving you micronutrients that can help you with your mental and emotional health. Move more. How many of you feel amazing after a beautiful workout? You feel so amazing. There you go. It's a natural drug to feel better. Do all of these things. The things I'm speaking to you about today are free. Are free. Now you have a choice because free is always taken for granted. You have a choice to use them a little consistently. It's self-discipline. Or you can become a product of the sick care system. And you can be chronically sick on pill after pill. Take it if necessary. Take your medication if necessary. But it's useless unless you change your lifestyle. And that includes the way you think, feel, move, eat, sleep. All of that stuff. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.